guys, and welcome back to the Virtual Reality Show, where we talk about any and all things related to virtual reality inside virtual reality. <laughs> I'm your host, Fia. It's time to get comfy and cozy as we head into the world of VR chat sleepers today. People from all over the world are jumping into the social VR title, and many people have begun to use VR as a replacement for many things in their real lives. One of these things is, of course, sleeping. So on initial thoughts, sleeping in VR sounds super uncomfortable and like a terrible idea, but as an avid VR chat player, I just keep hearing about people who do it. So I decided to get to the bottom of it. Why do people sleep in VR chat? Is it healthy to sleep with the headset on? What's it like to wake up in a virtual world? And what will I think after trying to sleep in VR for myself? Let's uncover these secrets together as we dive into the cozy world of VR chat sleepers. To first gather some information, I reached out to file my own research from people on Twitter and Discord. I had a few dozen users reach out and explain the way they sleep in VR to me so that I could better understand how it's done, why it's done, and where they do it. One of the users who reached out was a friend of mine, Wi-Fi Punk. I decided to conduct an interview with him to get his opinion on VR chat sleeping since I knew he was a seasoned player of the game and could provide me with potential insight into this phenomenon. I'm Wi-Fi Punk. So yeah, I think I first downloaded VR Chat sometime around 2016. Um, I'm curious. So how many times in like a given week, like how many nights would you say that you fall asleep in VR Chat? I probably fall asleep right now, maybe like four, five times a week. So I had myself a VR sleeping expert. Combined with the answers from random internet users who reached out, I learned a lot about the basics of how VR sleeping works. My biggest concern was how do people actually manage to get comfortable enough to fall asleep with a giant headset on without breaking it? What is your setup when you're actually trying to fall asleep? Like, like comfortability wise, like what is that like? If anything, I'll, pr I'll prop a couple of pillows or something behind my neck, you know? Mm -hmm. Make sure that I'm supported and I'm not going to move around too much. I, I, if anything, I, that's the, the advice I would give to people is just try to put yourself in a position where you're not going to be rolling in your sleep. It seems that people use mattresses, beds, beanbags, or even just sleep on the floor with pillows, but typically find positions where they won't end up sleeping on their side for potential damage to their earpieces. It's also important to watch out for your cable and get into a position where it won't be in your way. A friend of mine, Festive, warned me about the dangers of this. I was laying on my back when I remember falling asleep. And I had a dream, and it woke me up. And I noticed the coil had wrapped around my neck four times. So I must oh, have been wow. in such a bad state where I just kept twisting. And it wasn't like it was loose. It actually had, like, some tension to it. Not enough to really, you know, strangle someone, but enough to spook them if they're not really realizing what they're waking up to do. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, I just didn't want to do it ever again, because it's, it's scary. You don't know what the hell's going on. When you're just waking up, your, your first thought is, Okay, here we go, I'm waking up. Mine was, holy shit, why is there a cable around my neck? Mm. Many of the people I talked to mentioned that their very first time they fell asleep in VR, they found it uncomfortable, but got used to it over time. So now that I understood the how part of it, I wanted to move on to the why question. Why do people choose to sleep in VR rather than the comfortability of not having a giant piece of technology strapped to your head? Well, there's two reasons I learned. The, the connection that you're making with other people around you is really the key, which is why anybody would go to a, a public world and, and pass out with random strangers that they don't know. Or, you know, maybe you have a significant other or whatever, and, you know, you want to spend time together and you don't want to be apart. The reasoning is something I've deemed as social sleeping. VR chat is a social game where the main point is to spend time with other users. Most dedicated players are going to enjoy this aspect of the game that's so much they develop close friends and relationships within it. Growing up, we have sleepovers with our friends and enjoy extra time with them. We fall asleep next to our significant others when we're older. It's a totally normal thing to want to be surrounded by people or a person you trust when hitting the hay. 
What VR does is make this easy. No matter how far away you are from your friends, if you have VR, you can feel that sense of presence of having them there with you. You can turn your head and hear their voice coming from that same direction. This provides a lot of comfort to people. They'll cuddle up next to each other in full body tracking and relax while doing things like head pats or practicing phantom touch. Almost all the people I talked to said the main pull for them is social sleeping. Only a couple users I spoke to ever slept alone. But for the people who slept alone, there was another aspect that really made them want to sleep in VR. And for them, it was the fact that you can experience any world or place. One of my biggest things with being in New York is the fact that I literally have no way of seeing the stars. Because where I lived at the time was the Bronx. It's just full of a lot of light pollution. Every, every building, every car, every street light's always got a light on or something. So it's terribly horrible to see up in the sky. The world I found had, you know, like this moon flying by. It had like a bunch of the planets, even had like, I think it was a couple of shooting stars. Mm. And for me, obviously not seeing that really often, I thought it was amazing because I don't get that on a day-to-day basis. That's definitely one of my biggest favorite moments of being in VR. Chilling at night, sometimes just before I go to sleep, looking up being like, yep. This is awesome. (laughs) (laughs) People like Festive are able to experience worlds and places they can only dream of because of their real life circumstances. The possibilities of worlds are endless. Sleep by the ocean, in the rain, on a rooftop, near a castle, or even a video game from your childhood. But that's where the next question comes into play. Where are people choosing to sleep in VR? What are the main worlds that people choose to go to? What would you say are some inherent traits that would make like a world relaxing or maybe some world options that would be like ideal mm. for a sleeping world? Oh, that's easy. So you got the, the, the big one is post-processing options. Ambiance is really important and people forget that you don't need to like be outside to have ambiance, you know? Mm, right. Uh, in it, like indoor ambiance is still really important. Gotta have bean bags, gotta have blankets pillows, that stuff. So it seems like there's a lot of things that go into a good sleeping world. Worlds where you can change the lighting and sounds to your liking pull people's attention towards them. Anything soft and comfy looking also has a strong appeal. But little did Wi-Fi Punk know that I was actually gathering his advice for my own sleep experiment. What would be your advice for first time sleepers and whether that's like getting comfortable or what it's like like or any like advice? Uh, make sure you're comfortable. Find some worlds that you do like so you're not thinking too hard about it. If you're like trying to like force it as a thing, you're just gonna, you're just gonna be miserable. Um, I think most folks that sleep in VR now kind of just did it, you know? Like they didn't really, if, if anything, when they first started uh, sleeping in VR, it was on accident. Um, it was because they were staying up super late because they were having too good of a time mm-hmm. <laughs> with their friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it, was, it, was, it was because they were trying to comfort somebody. It's not something that, sh- that people should treat as escapism. Mm-hmm. Um, d- there's enough of that already on VR. So even though he said that you shouldn't force it, I decided I wanted to do my own sleep experiment anyways. But before I was ready to commit, I wanted to know, is it even healthy? After some online research, I found the health and safety guide to Oculus, which stated, do not use headset if feeling sleepy. This was an obvious bad sign, but I wanted to do more research on my own first. There was an obvious lack of research on this topic considering how new of a phenomena it is, but the one thing I did remember is that my doctor always told me to limit screen usage before bed. So how bad would it be to stick a screen next to my face for an entire night? Well, what I found is that the main concern is how screen light affects our sleep cycle, but specifically how blue light affects it. A quick Google search led me to finding out that blue light mirrors sunlight in the way it suppresses melatonin from being released in our bodies, a hormone that helps us fall asleep. I personally use a night mode on my phone and PC for this reason. Orange light is the opposite of blue and is a much healthier alternative to blue light. 
Now, while my PC VR headset doesn't have a night mode, you are able to turn screen brightness down to 20% in your Steam settings. This greatly reduces the impact of light and helps you fall asleep much easier. I can't say whether or not there's still potential harm from having the screen next to your face, even with dim light, but my personal and unprofessional opinion is that it should mostly be okay. Of course, I'd recommend doing your own research before making this decision for yourself. Here's what Wi-Fi Punk had to say about his experience. I ha have semi-consistent health checks for myself. I know I'm doing okay. And I went to the eye doctor and they said my eyes have been, or have, have they look fantastic. Oh, it's that's like, great. I, my prescription hasn't changed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so funny because since I got really into VR, my prescription hasn't changed at all for the mm. last five years. So it's like, as far as I'm concerned, it's it's kind of had a it's 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 only <laughs> only had benefits. So. Well, now I felt safe enough and educated enough to try out my own sleep experiment and see how it is for myself. I gathered some VR sleep friends of mine to join me for a sleepover in VR chat. I needed to do some prep, so I got a close friend of mine named Croa to show me to some worlds where we picked out one called Wolfie's Hangout and Sleep. I also purchased myself a giant beanbag to rest in. I called up my British boyfriend Protostar to join us as well, and there's not a single person I'd rather cuddle up next to in VR. Okay, I put my PJs on. Um, to get nice and comfy, I have my giant bean bag that I purchased specifically for this video. It was like $250. Hopefully this is a good investment. I just <laughs> really hope that this is worth it. Um, but let me go get some of my extra tools that'll help us later. Um, ready? Pillow? Check. Pushies? Check. Hydration? Check. Ugh. So now I've got pretty much everything I need to get nice and comfy and cozy tonight um, so I can sleep in VR. So I guess the only thing I have left is to get my headset on and enjoy um, the comfy, sleepy vibes. Welcome everybody to the sleepover. Yay! Yay! Well, I'm gonna change into my comfy avatar so that I can match Protostar. All right, awesome. Well, welcome sleep buddies. Um, I have my cuddle buddy, Protostar. We are gonna be cuddling. Um, he's not sure if he's gonna sleep the entire time yet, but he's gonna give it a shot. Um, and then we have the expert sleepers, Croa and Star. Um, and they are gonna be our sleepy guides. We have a couple more people possibly showing up to the sleepover in a little bit later, um, once we're actually ready to head to sleep sleep time. And I'm really excited. So, um, Croa and Star, I know you guys are the expert sleepers. So tell me, what's it like when you guys sleep in VR? Uh, it feels like a void that if you don't have anybody to sleep with, IRL, you just grab like a hug pillow. And then you just hug your friend and it helps simulate like you're actually sleeping with somebody. It makes you feel a little less alone at night. Our lighting controls over here so we can control like how um, dim it is and stuff. What do you think it's going to be like falling asleep next to each other after uh, we've been apart for so long? Uh, I mean, it'll probably be kind of similar. You know, you know, have a sense of replacing it, but... No, not exactly the same. It'll probably feel as hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It'll probably get quite toasty um, with the headset on, especially for you with no AC. I went to bed at midnight and had an alarm set at 8 to make sure I got a full 8 hours of sleep during the experiment. Honestly, it took me a long time to actually fall asleep. I felt pretty uncomfortable as normally sleeping on my tummy wasn't a possibility at all with the giant headset on my face. It wasn't the worst though, it was nice cuddling next to my boyfriend and feeling like I was sleeping next to him. I had my plushie next to me so it almost felt like he was there beside me. After I finally had fallen asleep, I suddenly woke up to the familiar sound of dun 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 dun, followed by spawning into the VR chat home world. I still have no idea what happened, but I somehow got kicked out of the world away from my friends. I tried to join back, but everyone was on do not disturb mode, so I was stuck. 
I decided to pick out a starry night sky camping world and sleep inside a tent until the morning where I would be reunited with everyone again. I woke up to the sound of my alarm. I felt weird suddenly waking up to a virtual world and seeing polygons instead of real life. It was a shocking moment for me, and I really felt immersed, like I truly belonged in this world. I quickly joined back into my friend's world and we chatted about the experience. It was not easy to fall asleep. I think most everybody else was passed out before me. Um, I noticed that my tracking kept on um, disconnecting, so even though I was in a place where my trackers could be seen, I think just being in kind of a static position, um, kind of hidden away from them, uh, they kept on disconnecting. And same with my controllers, I realized that there was not really a point in holding my controllers, because throughout the night they would just turn off and I'd have to turn them back on, which was obviously a bit of a pain, especially with the sound. Um, I had my brightness turned down super low, um, so it was really comfortable, and I just curled up next to Proto. At some point during the night, I know that he just gave up, <laughs> which I don't blame him because he doesn't have AC and you're wearing a headset in his tiny room without AC sounds pretty miserable, but I was a little sad. It was a little disappointing to you know, wake up and not have him there. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe if I do it on accident, sure, but I don't think I'm ever going to purposely go out of my way once again to sleep in VR because it was quite uncomfortable. Um, wearing all just the headset on your face is just, that's the killer, it's the killer. Um, so once you get used to that, I'm sure it's a lot easier, but you know, I'm not somebody who can really sleep on planes or cars anyways, so it's kind of a similar, like if I feel uncomfortable, I have a lot of trouble sleeping, so. Even though I didn't necessarily enjoy this experiment, I would consider it a success. I truly did fall asleep and I had the experience for myself. I hope you enjoyed my journey learning about VR sleep and that you learned something for yourself as well. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more VR related content. I will be streaming on Twitch after this video goes live, so hop on over there to hang out and chat with me. Make sure to check out my Patreon to help support making videos just like this. I have tons of cool rewards I think you'll love. Anyways, I've been your host Fia, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Special thanks to this month's Patreon members and virtual VIPs, Backsorn. Dutek, Klukule, Score Maller, and Tamagotchi Poppy.